Schultz, founder owner of Bin 412, back here with our June wine of the month. Took a poll out on our social media and uh, heard from you guys loud and clear. You wanted us to focus on one varietal uh, and see how that tastes different across different parts of the world. So we picked Sauvignon Blanc. What better grape to do on a hot summer day than Sauvignon Blanc? Uh, it's a grape that originates in Old World uh, in France, in uh, the Bordeaux area to be specific, but is certainly propagated and grown just about everywhere in the world right now with a lot of success, not only in Bordeaux, but also in the Loire Valley. Uh, and then as far out as New Zealand, uh, South Africa, Chile, California as well. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc is the third most planted by acres uh, white grape in the world, only behind Chardonnay and Aran, which is a, uh, a, a white grape that's grown in southern Spain. So the, uh, you know, the, the, the grape has taken off, and we've got a couple really good examples to share with you here today. So we've got a little bit of an old world, some new world, um, a little bit cooler climate, a little bit warmer climate. So uh, Sauvignon Blanc in general needs a cooler climate to do well. Uh, it needs a long growing season, and these are all relatively cooler climate parts of the world and it's specifically cooler climate parts of their of their home so even a california wine they're sourcing a lot of these grapes from the cooler parts of california okay so uh we're gonna drink through all these and let's start first with the sancerre so i have a pascal jolivet 2016 sancerre this is from the Loire Valley, and this is really, in my mind, what sets the benchmark for this varietal. Really cool climate, um, produces minerally, kind of citrus-driven wines from these limestone soils, uh, commerdigium soils, that um, just really give you this mineral edge. So let's jump right in your house. You know, when I look at these, I don't see a tremendous amount of color variation, which I, you know, I'm a little bit surprised by. Maybe the, 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 the second one here is a little darker, but all of these are pretty much straw yellow. Let's jump into the Sancerre. On the nose, Very citrusy, uh, definitely some lemon rind. Um, a little bit of honeydew, um, but really good minerality. You can just, you know, like gravelly, wet rock, um, slate. And very floral, you know, a lot, of, a lot of like white flowers on this as well, a really pretty nose. Let's give it a shot. Mm. Yeah, textbook sense there. Razor sharp, super clean, very precise, very focused. Um, you know, I think this is a pretty low alcohol wine too, 12.5%. 12, 12 um, just a really good cut, really good balance of fruit, acid. Um, and the finish at this point, it's almost turning to like the smoky minerality. It's just a really interesting wine. Um, very clean, very precise, just textbook, textbook Sauvignon Blanc. Definitely need to seek this one out. Okay, next one, Branket Estate. This is a famous one. I've been drinking this for several years. Marlboro, New Zealand. Now, New Zealand seems like a warmer climate, right? Um, but it's very influenced by the maritime uh, nature there. So it's a very long, thin island. In fact, the furthest inland you can go in New Zealand is 80 miles. So no matter how deep into the into the island you are, you're really only 80 miles away from the ocean. So definitely a cooler part of, of the world, even though it, it might not seem that off, out of the gates. Now again, the color on this one's a little bit darker. Um, now it's a little bit older than these other ones, but not, not tremendously. Okay, so wow, what a difference on the nose. Um, herbal, herbaceous, um, fresh cut grass. I just cut my grass today. This is like going in and pulling the grass out of your grass bag, out of your lawnmower and, and empty. And it's, uh, it's very herbaceous and very intensely herbaceous, very pungent. Let's give it a shot. You know what? Um, Ian Cobble said this too, a fresh, uh, freshly opened can of tennis balls. I forget what wine he was describing, but that's got this as well. This has got a real intensity in the nose. Let's give it a shot. Very different one. Riper fruit, almost borderline sweet. It's so ripe and, and um, more like passion fruit notes. But there's a there's a pepperiness to this though, uh, almost a jalapeno esque bite and um, a mouth watering acidity. So whereas this was very razor sharp and focused and almost turned smoky and minerally at the end, this is um, a little bit of a pepper note and and really just. Uh, you know, it's making me want to drink more. Just the acidity is making my mouth water. Um, very pungent though, very, very, very strong flavor and a very strong nose, very herbaceous. 
The next one is from South Africa. This is from Malderbosch. It's one of my favorite wineries in the Stellenbosch region, uh, just outside of Cape Town. And again, here you're in the, um, you know, you got a maritime influence. So you're down on the southern tip of South Africa. Um, and there's these kind of large granite mountains that kind of funnel down towards the sea. And all in those runoffs, all in those alluvial fans that come down from that, uh, from that mountain are these gran granite type soils that are super, super old and typically give wines from this region a really good minerality. Uh, so excited to jump in and try this one as well. Okay, again, much different. So definitely need to try this, get, get a couple different ones and you'll really see the difference in one varietal and how it can be different around the world. So this thing, this has a, uh, a much more greenness to it. This is asparagus and, uh, and green pea um, and, and herbs though too. It's got some basil, some sage, it's savory. Um, and then a little bit of grapefruit and some citrus as well, but it's, uh, it's, it's more of a green, more of a savory nose than the other two. Really neat juxtaposition. Again, minerally precise, focused, herbaceous, grassy, intense, um, you know, razor sharp, intensity. This has minerality of the Sancerre without the, um, without the herbaceousness here. It's a little bit of that green note, but not quite as intense as the, as the New Zealand. It's a really kind of nice in between. I almost kind of wish I would have done these this way. Um, not quite as acidic though, either. Um, definitely, you know, coats the mouth and, and, and I want to have another sip, uh, but not quite as acidic as the New Zealand, but just a really nicely made wine, um, all around. Okay, and I think these were both 13.5, so we've got 12.9, or 12.5, 13.5, 13.5. Now we're gonna get into the Californian, and uh, this is from Joel Gott, and this is 13.9% alcohol. So this has a little bit more alcohol than the other ones. As we would expect, it's a little bit of a warmer climate. They're sourcing these grapes, though, again, like I said, from a little bit of Napa to get some richness, but also from Sonoma, from Lake County, uh, from Santa Barbara, from kind of Central Coast, and some of the cooler climate areas as well. Let's give this one a whirl. Well, again, so different, so different. So much more tropical, much more riper fruit. Um, yeah, pineapple, um, melon, mango, uh, definitely much more tropical. You're not getting those citrus notes like on the other three. It's a little bit more uh, ripe fruit. Let's give it a shot. Much heavier mouthfeel, rounder, not as angular, not as acidic as the others. Um, a good long finish, uh, but it's a bigger mouthful. It's a riper Sauvignon Blanc. It's a more tropical Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so again, all of these varietally correct. You're gonna definitely take any one of these blind and know that it's Sauvignon Blanc. It's got that herbaceousness, that uh, that citrus driven um, um, nose, a little bit more tropical on this one, um, and a little bit of aroma of, uh, of cat urine, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but Sauvignon Blanc is known to have that. I didn't pick up a tremendous amount in these. Maybe the Sancerre a little bit more than the other ones I noticed at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely get it on the Sancerre, uh, and this one was just so pungently grassy. Yeah, it's just totally different. Um, a little bit like, yeah, I, I don't want to say it, but this is very, very herbal. I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, but four completely different wines, all 100% Sauvignon Blanc. So I recommend going out and doing this. Um, these are, you know, $10, $15 bottles. I think the Sancerre was in the $20 range. Um, you're going to pay a little bit more for that. But definitely do this. And uh, obviously, I've been kind of working at these with some family and, and, and friends over the weekend. Uh, but doing these side by side, you really get a diff uh, to, to understand the difference of what one varietal can taste like as you go around the world. So, um, hey, as we say at uh, Bin 412, the world of wine is obviously an enormous place. So here's to expanding your palate, drinking new varietals. And even when you're drinking a varietal you know very well, drinking new regions. Cheers.